I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. If you've been listening to the show, you know that I decided to go out and meet people every week that I was going to talk to this time. The concept sounded kind of cool to me. Get a feel for where they live and create. So I scheduled interviews in the spring to do this, but the spring decided not to cooperate. It was just too damn cold outside to walk around. So I asked each person if there was a place in their neighborhood that they knew where we could meet up and talk. I realized that this gave me the added bonus of discovering some of the places around town that all of them were familiar with. My name is Linda Ledsky, and I am a writer, among other things, a blogger, an emerging artist, a new filmmaker. And I'm working on a web series project called Hotel Bar as part of the Madison Indie Filmmakers. Now, Linda suggested that we meet at the public library downtown. I actually had not been there since they remodeled it, so I was looking forward to seeing what it was like now. So she set us up in one of the conference rooms. And if you've listened to the show last season, fun fact, Linda is Tammy from Bohemian Bobble's sister. I understand from my sister, uh, Tammy, that you're going to be joining um, her and the other artists at the Hibernation um, I'm Liberation. Out there, yes. What are you going to do at that event? That's a good question. So I'm going to just essentially promote the show. I'm going to, if people want to, I'm going to go say your name, tell me a little bit about yourself, and put together a collage of the people that are there. I'm Amy. Amy, okay. Yes. And then, uh, so what brings you here today? Um, well, I'm an artist at heart, but not currently working on anything so well, what kind of artist um i love abstract performance art that's my favorite but i've never talked to a performance artist before <laughs> okay all right all right now what what does that entail what's abstract performance um i really really like neo-futurist style so based on what they're doing in chicago the neo-futurarium there okay. and uh, i took a class there i loved it so it really just it's um uh, Kind of performing in your truth. You're not an actor or actress, but you're just being you on stage, and crafting stories, sort of like storytelling in action. I mean, you said you're not doing anything artistically. No, I'm, a I'm a teacher, so I just do. I'm a special educator and an and an art teacher. But it's funny. I choose to sub so that I can travel and have flexibility in my life. And there's a need, so that's it. That I, actually makes total sense. Now that you say that, it's like, I'm gonna substitute everything I do. Yeah, exactly. I've just realized I'm a huge commitment foe, apparently, when it comes to employment. So I'm like, I get to just swoop in on the days I want to teach, see a bunch of people, put some kindness into them, and then pop out and it's sort of. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a commitment phobe, I would call it strategic, because, you know. Nice. What, so what would you like to do if you had the opportunity? What would you like to do with the... If, in art-wise? Yeah, Teaching-wise? Yeah. Um, gosh, that's interesting. I would love... I suppose I need to challenge myself to do some creative expression through movement and performance. Um, yeah, I love the aesthetic, aesthetic dance um, that's happening in Madison here. It's like on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays where it's like free-form movement. So. I see that as a form of performance art in a way for myself because I go and move and work through through my stuff with my body. So I want to continue doing that. And um, yeah, I'm also uh, kind of signing on board to possibly illustrate some children's books with my friend. I like even your answer was like I might do this or I might do this. Yeah, you see, you see don't how I down. don't. Yeah, don't don't make me make art right now. I'm not. <laughs> I might, I might not. I, I might just enjoy your art and everyone. Okay, now back to Linda. When I first contacted her, I learned that she was starting her own web series called Hotel Bar. It's in the creating stages right now, correct? So you're... Okay, okay. Pre-production stages Pre is, is how the professionals um, say it. But I wasn't sure. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to practice a craft that I haven't quite yet mastered. But yes, we're in the pre-production stage. We have, we meet once a month. We have a, a creative and production team. I'm identifying collaborative partners who want to be responsible for particular roles, like the director of photography who's assembled his own um, production crew. I attend and schedule a week, a monthly writer's room, and I have a head writer who has um, completed our pilot script, but we are also beginning to work on the arc of the series because it's a web series 
we're probably going to have 10 episodes. And while I love the idea of a web series, what made you decide to go with that format instead of, I don't know, say a movie or a short film or something? End of August, uh, September of this year, I started attending the Madison Indie Filmmakers Group. I had an idea for Hotel Bar, and I attended the next meeting, which is was called a project showcase where people who had projects that they were working on pitched it. Mm -hmm. So I pitched my idea and quickly people said, hey, I like that. It sounds fun. I want to be involved. Okay. And so it quickly evolved. And then as I got feedback from people, I hadn't thought of it yet, whether it was a short film, a full length feature. And people said, this lends itself to a web series because I was going to have a series of reoccurring characters, but then each episode was going to feature a new character. Mm -hmm. And it's cheaper in some ways to produce in terms of di distribution and, and that sort of thing. So you started out, you said you were a writer, and then you attended this this film group thing. So first of all, what you were doing in your writing before and what made you go, I'm going to attend this film group thing? Well, I've been um, a poet for over 30 years oh. and I used to do stand-up comedy. So I wrote a lot of comedy. Really? Yes. And I was uh, acted in some improvisational comedy groups. I started straight a little bit from um, stand-up I'm a recovering alcoholic, and the more sober and healthier I got, the more frightening it was to be on stage. Uh, I get that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and so I started writing monologues for other people to perform, and I produced a monologue, part of a monologue festival with a group, a writing group that I was a member of. So my writing has sort of evolved. Then about five years ago, I started a blog, mm -hmm. which is called Mixed Metaphors, Oh My, mm -hmm. and it started out as sort of a reminiscence writing experience where I was, you know, just capturing stories about my life, yeah. the mundane details of my life, but trying to look for some... That's what blogging was when it exactly. started out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I was looking for some universal themes that people could relate to, and my audience, I started finding an audience, and people were like, thank you, Linda, I, I've had a similar experience, or... You just put it into words in a way that I couldn't. And one of the things that I was doing on my blog, because I am and have been a lifelong cinephile, I go to a lot of movies, I write about film, mm -hmm. my, my family, I credit my mother. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing reviews. So every year I do an annual kind of best films of the previous year as a film goer, not as a, as a critic, but just based on the genres that I like and, and my impressions. So I write a lot about films, and then I've been very active in the Wisconsin Film Festival. This year, in fact, I have press cre credentials, so I'm officially... Look at you, fancy. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll be writing more about the uh, Wisconsin Film Festival. Well, that all led me to answer your question. Yes. Um, that all led me to, you know, I need to learn more about filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that changed is I went from working full-time to working part-time. And so I started having three-day weekends and shorter work days, which gave me an opportunity to add to my avocations um, rather than my vocations. You've never produced it for entertainment is what you're saying. Exactly. I mean, the only work that I ever produced for entertainment was the stand-up comedy, which required me to be on stage. Yeah. Did you write bits or you just went up there and let your mind do the work? I did both. I wrote com uh, whole comedy sketches, 15-minute, half-hour things. I performed mostly in venues around Madison. <laughs> This is the beauty of, a, of the Madison Independent Filmmakers. It's a relatively new group, and some of the people who founded the group are really putting a lot of energy and skills into developing it because they believe that Madison has a, the, a potential for a, a filmmaking community, a community that can thrive. So a lot of people show up at these meetings, um, some of which are people who have their own projects, but some of them are raising their hand and saying, I'd like to act, or I'd like to learn camera work, um, I'd like to, to be a writer. Mm -hmm. When I pitched my idea, and there were other projects that were being pitched, but people liked the idea. And since I was a novice filmmaker, others who were new to the craft 
felt comfortable, I think, reaching out to me. So I have people who are learning by doing along with me. And the beauty of it is there are people who are part of Madison Independent Filmmakers who are professional level, who have years of experience, whose commitment is to mentoring okay. and sharing their wealth of information and their tools and skills and equipment, anything that they can. How are you setting this up to the final, like when are you gonna start filming it? How are you putting this together? We have spent some time in our primary location, which is the Brink Lounge, mm -hmm. and Kurt Brink, who's the owner there, has been an enthusiastic supporter of our project. So Mondays, they're, they're closed, and so we have use of the, the space on Mondays. So we've been having our creative and production team meetings there on Mondays. We've been blocking out the scenes, We've been looking at some of the technical issues with and the there's lighting. there's a bar there, which is handy. Yes, because <laughs> that's the case. Or the our main character is St. Peter, yeah. and he is a bartender at the hotel bar, so it's become our hotel bar. Yeah. Our plan is to begin casting call and auditions in April, and by the end of April, hopefully, we'll have our primary characters, plus we'll be looking at actors for future episodes mm -hmm. and then um, we'll begin filming probably in June so we need to storyboard like this June this June oh. exactly so okay we're gonna be storyboarding in May maybe beginning in April so one of the kinds of uh, talents that I'm looking for is a good storyboard artist okay. um, although people because a lot of us are novice filmmakers, we're encouraged to try things that we don't think we're very good at. I recently applied to the Sundance Institute, mm. which was taking applications for an episodic lab. How did you find that? Because I'm a big um, cinephile, of, I watch a lot of movies, and I try to uh, like groups that have information that I can use, and Sundance, of course, is one of those uh, organizations that has lots of content that's really helpful. Yeah. And so I, it came up in my feed. And okay. uh, I'm like, ooh, perfect timing, because I need help. So the internet, basically. Yeah, <laughs> basically the internet. The internet is my friend, you know, and I'm a late adopter to technology. <laughs> question I had, what is the theme of it in the sense of, is it a comedy, is it a drama, is it... It's going to be a, a dramedy. We're going to be actually tackling some pretty serious subjects. Gun violence is one, homelessness, um, hypocrisy um, in terms of the, in the church. Lots of different issues that uh, are, by their very nature, difficult and challenging and may spur discussions. But we want to do it in such a way that we don't lose our audience. We don't want to lecture people. We're not always going to have a point of view. We're going to maybe ask the questions and see and expect our audience to respond. There'll be a lot of play between our main characters, um, St. Peter and uh, Sam, who's the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a, you know, eons long relationship, which they're still kind of competing with each other. It'll have the whole will they, won't they vibe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> The way that I read it was, and tell me if you've heard this one before, Duffy's Tavern. I don't know if you're familiar, but it was a radio show in the 1940s, and it was a guy that ran a bar, and it had a cast of characters that were there. They hung out. Mm -hmm. But Duffy, the guy who owned it, was never there. But he would always call Archie, the bartender, to ask what's going on. And so you never heard him. It would just right. be him talking on the phone, like Bob Newhart style. And he would kind of, but the thing is, is he would hang up, and it was still a radio show, even though it was a bar, and Duffy would hear what was going on there, kind of like God. And like metaphorically, I always wondered, like, is that what Duffy's Tavern is? Is oh. it. Is it purgatory? And that's the first thing I thought. And it, like, I, I bet you thought I was going to say cheers. Well, that's the thing that most people <laughs> respond to. If you you get a, have to check it out. Yeah, if it, it, it's, it's online. You can find it. Check it out. It's pretty interesting. One of the things that the Madison Indie Filmmakers is doing, in fact, I'm going to one of the seminars um, next week, is to schedule learning opportunities for new people like me mm -hmm. to learn some of the technical aspects of the craft. So there's going to be a cinematography workshop mm -hmm. um, this coming week at Sequoia Library. It's uh, unfortunately already filled, um, but there's going to be more workshops ahead. Um, one of the people, Randy, who is a very experienced filmmaker, 
has kind of pulled people to find out what are the things, what are the areas you'd like to learn more about. And so over the course of the next year, they're scheduling uh, some seminars so that people can share their experience with people like myself who are still learning. Mm -hmm. The other thing is in July, this year Madison and the independent filmmakers are also going to participate in the 48-hour film fest which is a project where you assemble a team mm -hmm. and within 48 hours you produce a short film that follows one of the genres. When we do ours in July, not everybody's used doing the same date. So people in Chicago will be doing theirs, people in Boston, mm -hmm. people in San Francisco have their own dedicated date. The way it works is you assemble a team, you pay a fee, then they give you a series of genres and they choose two genres for you, and then from those two, you have to select which one you want to do your project on. And then you write it, mm -hmm. film it, edit it, yeah. you know, everything within that 48 hours. One thing about talking with Linda that is very much in tune with the way I'm thinking right now, it's never too late to do what you feel you want to do. I put on hold everything that I wanted to do until I realized, what am I waiting for? Next week, I meet with a person who decided that they were going to change everything they did and go into embroidery. You can learn more about this show at AmericanBandito.com. And if you haven't already, subscribe at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. Until next time, so long. <laughs>